in a lot of churches, there's um, different dress codes. Uh, you know, you're expected to dress a, a certain way, not just for people on the stage, uh, but for people in the church. And um, here's the thing about dress codes. I, I understand that, you know, different people have different expectations of things, and I'm not trying to set the world on fire, okay? But um, any time that there's a dress code, it's going to be a club and not a church. Okay, remember that. Any time there's a dress code, it's going to be a club and not a church. Um, because what dress codes do is they limit the limit who can attend if you are unable to comply with the dress code. Okay, so if you look at the early church, you find a bunch of poor people, and you don't find a whole bunch of people in real fancy clothes. Well, fast forward 2,000 years to the American church, what do you see? Well, in more streamlined churches, they have, you know, the worship leaders wear tight jeans, and I'm not saying you have to go to extremes. Um, but the general rule, rule of thumb should be, if we are a church, that would that should mean that we have people from the community, which should mean we should dress like the people from the community. And I'm not saying you have to come to church, you know, dress like a gangster. <laughs> but there is a line between thinking that you're better than someone else because you dress better than them, and thinking that, you know, God is somehow honored by the clothes that you wear. It's not like that. Um, any time that any time that, that there's that club kind of mentality that this is how we dress here because you know whatever reason um, that means that someone isn't going to be welcome um, or if it's just the pastor who's expected to dress nice and everybody else just dresses however then that's going to have an in imbalance in the church structure and I'll tell you why because the cha the pastor is being held to a standard that not everyone else is held to and I understand that leaders are held to a higher standard but when you start being the judge and jury for the pastor, and he's there for your entertainment basis, and your job is to keep him in check, uh, you're not going to have a healthy church structure. And not only that, but people in the community won't feel like they can relate to your pastor because he's dressed above them like he thinks that he's higher than them. And people who are stuck in sin, people who don't like church, people who maybe have been burnt out, etc., they're not really going to like to walk up to this person who's dressed real nice. So keep the, keep these things in mind. And I, I get the whole wanting to honor God. But here's the thing. Honoring God is about how you treat people, not about how you dress. See, the Pharisees thought it was all about their external things too. And Jesus wasn't really impressed. But what God is happy with is a heart that seeks him. When he goes through the Beatitudes, what does he say? Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the peacemakers. He never once says he's saying there anything about the people who dress real nice to honor me. Honoring God is loving people. Look at the law. Honoring God is loving people. Okay? Um, so honoring is about how you treat people. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. The stories I could tell. The stories I could tell. If you've been in church um, for any amount of time, you you know, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so let's look at some notes here. What to wear in church? Well, remember this: in the, the early church dressed in normal clothes, normal everyday clothes. They didn't dress any different. Um, so that brings me to the question, you know, if you're like a worship leader, for instance, and you feel like you have to like put on this facade and wear the tight jeans because it's what's hip, you might want to reconsider that. If people aren't actually wearing, dressing like that just, you know, in your normal populace, maybe you shouldn't. Now, today, in today's world, it's a little bit different because you have a way more diversity in how people dress. And thing, lines have kind of become blurred a lot. So there's a lot more leeway in what you can wear. Um, you know, and, but I will say this, just re remember to keep the people in mind. Um, okay, so, um, when the church became imperialized, um, you know, things became a little more legalistic and that kind of stuff, and then the government got involved, and it kind of went downhill, like, a lot, and that was, like, in the 300s, uh, AD, so, from that point on, you see a continuing um, grasp for power, and you see people um, 
putting on more of a show and having less real encounters with God. Now, obviously, there were still real Christians. I, I'm not judging all of Christianity, but the imperial Christian movement was, excuse me, was a lot different than what God had in mind. In fact, it was contradictory of what God had, had in mind. So, where you had people trying to fight for power, like the popes and the patriarchs and the kings and the emperors and all these things, you had all these people, you know, fighting for power. So, of course, you know, bishops and those kinds of things should dress in these really uh, real elaborate clothes. But if you look back in history, really, they didn't. It's more of a recent thing and doesn't really seem to have any root whatsoever in Jesus or his disciples or the early church. Um, in fact, maybe it has more to do with the law, which we've supposedly been set free from, than it has to do with the church. So keep those things in mind. Um, okay, so uh, the law was done away with, though. So with that in mind, you know, Jesus is the priest. We are shepherds. And how do shepherds dress? Do they dress in real elaborate clothes? No, they, they dress in the clothes to get the job done. See what I mean? So maybe put a little bit more thought into dress codes. First off, you shouldn't have them because you're not wanting to exclude people. You're wanting to include people. You're trying to hunt down the one, not save and preserve the 99. Okay. Uh, with that being said, maybe more forethought is necessary and maybe put more intentional thought into your clothes. For instance, if you're um, in a church that's doing well and you are the pastor, and you go out and buy really, really, really expensive clothes when your congregation probably doesn't wear those and the people who you're trying to reach definitely doesn't wear those, maybe you should put some thought into not doing that. You can get jeans that cost under $50. You can get jeans that last for years under $50. You can get jeans on sale that are even less than that. So my point being, maybe don't be the standard for for um, fashion. Maybe be the standard for serving and loving instead. I think a lot of times pastors just set themselves up for failure and people set up pastors for failure. So um, we are shepherds. Jesus is the priest. There's no reason to be dressing up in real elaborate things. Um, 1 Timothy 2, 9 through 10 does mention about dressing modestly, but this, isn't, this shouldn't be seen as just in the context of church. See, Paul didn't see this false line that we've made where when I'm in church, I, I dress and act like this. When I'm not in church, I dress and act like this. That's that's fake. Paul didn't have that mindset at all. He was in 1 Timothy 2, 9 through 10, he was talking about specifically about some women uh, in that church who were trying to turn heads, trying to get people to notice them, trying to, you know, whatever. And here's the situation there is he just says, dress modestly. You know, instead of trying to do all these things to get, you know, to get attention, be dressed in good works. You know, he focuses the attention back onto the heart. And I think that would be wise to remember this. You know, with all of our rules about dress codes and all this nonsense, maybe we should just remember that. Dress ourselves with good works. Hmm, now there is something that can be pleasing to God. So, obviously, I speak from a lot of history. And, uh... Wow. Well, I think I'm just going to leave it there. Um, so dress modestly. Um, you shouldn't be trying to get the attention on you. You shouldn't be constantly trying to turn heads. Now, this goes for men and women. Now, obviously, um, there may be some more feminists, for instance, that may disagree with what I'm saying. I, I'm not saying it's the woman's fault if she's raped or if she's um, ogled at or anything like that. But I also know that men are not... Good. I'm not saying that women are, women are, but I'm a man, and I know that men are not good. And if you dangle a piece of meat in front of men, I know it's in their heart, and it's not good. Don't ever trust a man to be a good person. That's just a, that's just setting yourself up for failure. That's just not going to happen. Now, obviously, obviously, it's the man's fault if he if he looks and if he acts and all those things. I'm not justifying any of that, but you can't be so naive about the nature of men. Most men only want to have sex all the time. Most men. Not not all men, but... So, I mean, obviously, if you do something that's going to play on their natural attraction for your obviously fairer sex, you know, and once again, though, I'm not justifying these things. So it is still the man's, man's fault, obviously. 
And once again, this whole dressing modestly thing should extend to men, too. Now, back then, it really wasn't an issue for men to dress in a way that would have enticed women. But nowadays, that's somewhat changed. Um, sometimes guys specifically try to dress in a way that will get a girl's attention. And, and so then the role would extend to men, too. Um, dress modestly. Dress yourself with good works, not with trying to um, get the attention on you. Remember that looks are fading, so don't forget that. Um, as far as hats, hats don't really matter. Now, some churches ha are hell-bent on the issue of the hat. Here's the thing, it really doesn't matter. The Old Testament priests, they wore head coverings, so don't worry about it too much. Now, I know that some people somewhere in here will bring up the passage in 1 Corinthians about head coverings. That whole passage deserves a special look. So in the future, I will upload a, a separate video just talking about that passage about head coverings in 1 Corinthians, but this is not the place. So hats really don't matter. It's more an issue of personal preference. If you live in a community that has a lot of military folk, it might be a good idea to enforce it, but ultimately you have to decide, do you want to keep the church where it's at or do you want to move it forward? And if you want to move it forward, that means you have to move with the community. And if you're trying to reach people in the community that are not military, unfortunately, there will be some people in the church who have a list of demands as to what you have to do to make them happy. They will not serve people. They, they will tell you how to, you should run things, but they won't, they won't volunteer. They should tell you what you're doing wrong, but they don't want you to tell, you to tell them what they're doing wrong. There is going to be those people. And, and unfortunately, sometimes a decision has to be made between catering to those people and making them happy as they sit there week after week doing absolutely nothing to contribute to God's kingdom. Or you can reach the ones who are lost. I wish it didn't come down to that, but oftentimes it does, because the people who have been in church 100 years who have never changed, they think that their tithes and, and paying in tithes entitles them to make all the calls in church and to make all the decisions and to be in charge of everything. This is not a healthy structure, and unfortunately it will probably end up with a clash. And so you have a culture clash between people trying to be what they want to be and you trying to get the church to be the church. Now, be careful in making decisions. Don't throw people under the bus. Remember to make decisions slowly and cautiously. But at the end of the day, as the leader, you have the very difficult task of making those hard calls. So make sure you think about it. Make sure you pray about it and be led by the Holy Spirit. But at the end of the day, you do have to make a decision. Um, there's actually a, a book um, called... Turnaround Pastors by Donald Ross. And one thing that he talks about, he talks about the three-day rule. Wait three days to make a decision. Just calm down for a little bit. So anyways, um, hats don't really matter, you know, whatever. If it's a big thing to somebody else, whatever. Um, I, once again, people come to our church with, with hats on, whatever. I wear hats in the church so that way they make, they feel welcome. But there are some people who I know who, who throw a royal fit if I wear a hat while leading worship or while preaching. Now, obviously, this is, a, this is a problem that they have invented in their own head. This is not something that's biblical. This is not something that's godly. It's something that they have chosen to be offended for the sole purpose that they want to be offended. However, it's usually the last generation, and if I just wait a couple more years, it really won't be an issue. The issue will just resolve itself. So in order to keep peace... Whatever. It doesn't matter to me. I couldn't care any less whether I wear a hat or not. I'm not doing it to be rebellious. I'm not doing it to irritate people. I'm just doing it to make people feel welcome. So what I've done now is I wear hats into church, and then whenever I'm doing something like on the stage or whatever, just to just to keep the peace, I take the hat off. I, you, you don't, don't make a war about everything. As a Christian, treat other people as more important than yourselves. And the only reason why I'm wearing a hat is to make people feel welcome. So why should I not also not wear the hat at certain times to make other people feel welcome? See what I mean? You, you can't take your personal offense into it. You have to think, what would God do? And what would matter to Jesus? And it, sometimes it's hard to walk that line, but you got to make the tough calls. Um, Christians should never dress better than the community. I already said that. In Colossians 3, 12, and 14, um, it talks about, or actually 12, 13, and 14, but still. It talks about different things that you should wear, how you should clothe yourself. Self. And the things that it says are not the things that people typically make a big deal about. It says, close yourself with compassion, with kindness, with those kinds of things, with forgiveness, with love. Those are the things it says to clothe yourself with. Re and read through it. And it's amazing that nobody highlights those things when they're talking about dress codes. What should Christians wear to church? They should wear a character that honors God. 
They should wear uh, they should wear the heart of Jesus. That's what they should wear. If your focus is more on rules and the external, you are not like Jesus. Adding works to salvation is basically what you're doing. You're saying you are okay, whatever, you're saved by by grace, whatever. But now you have to follow these rules in order to keep your salvation. Now you have to keep to this dress code in order to remember remember this. That clothes, the exact same type of clothing has been both endorsed and condemned by the church within within the span of 50 years. These kinds of stockings women can't wear. Okay, these, these kinds they can wear. Okay, now those ones are bad. Women can't wear pants. Okay, now they can. Okay, women should never cut their hair. Okay, now they can't cut their hair. Uh, see what I mean? Those kinds of things, they're fads. They come and go. And if you're just instituting a dress code based on a fad, you need to let it go. Well, we want our, our pastor to look sharp. Well... Good for you, but you aren't the pastor's boss. There's a clear line of authority. It goes, Jesus, the pastor, the deacons, or whatever uh, your church calls them, the 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 the, the, the laymen, the, the the regular churchgoers who don't have leadership. Or maybe there's an area up there where you're a volunteer but you're not a deacon. Somewhere in there. Okay, all right. But either way, there's this clear flow of of authority, and for the church to be effective, it has to. Focus on being like God told it to be. Um, if you have an authority problem and you have a pastor problem, that's more your fault and not your pastor's fault. And you shouldn't hold an entire church to dress code because you are easily offended. Um, pastors should never dress above their community. Because remember, you aren't the pastor of your church. You're the pastor of your community. How are you serving and loving people? And at the end of your life, will you be able to say this? I loved well, God gives a pastor a certain amount of talents, and he says, do with this. And so if you focus your entire pastorate on just maintaining the status quo, never reaching people in the community, you have failed as a pastor. If you, your sole intent as a pastor has been to get glory and, and, and to get a retirement, you, you have failed as a pastor. This is what makes you a successful pastor and what makes you a successful church. Did you love well? Did you obey well? Did you love God and did you love people? And did you obey what God told you to do? It doesn't matter if you messed up. It didn't matter if, if you had mistakes. It doesn't None of that stuff matters. What matters is that you love well and you obey well. So, pastors should not address just for their uh, community. Um, also, in Philippians 3, 7 through 8, Paul talks about how he's put away all of his titles and everything, which brings me to another point. We shouldn't come to church or actually in living our lives for our own sake, for our own glory, for our own power with our fancy titles. I'm Pastor Michael. I'm, in fact, I tell people I say, in, in the community, I say, don't call me Pastor. Now, there are some other pastors who I call pastor just to show them respect in front of their congregation because I'm not trying to burn the whole burn the whole world down. I'm not trying to change the whole world. If that's how they do things over there, that's fine. If he doesn't want me to call him pastor so-and-so, he'll tell me. Just call me this. That's fine. When I'm in private with him, I call, by, I call them by their first names, because, and I expect them to call me by my first name because I'm nothing exalted. I'm just a pastor. But in front of people, I act a little bit different. So that way the pastor doesn't feel awkward or embarrassed like he has to address an issue that maybe the church isn't ready to address. Um, so anyways, um, oh, I'm a doctor. You know, I have a doctorate's degree in this. You know, there's just a certain point where you have to realize that you're living for your own pride and for your own sake, and that's not a good way to be a Christian. Um, so don't dress yourself with fancy titles or fancy clothes, or go to the other extreme and try to dress like a, you know, homeless person. You can dress just casual where nobody feels out of place. The instant that there's a tie, you just change the atmosphere of your church. And there will be a culture change in your church if you do not wear a, wear a tie. Now, here's the thing. Don't make sudden changes. If your church is used to pastors with ties, maybe start teaching on it. Maybe start saying things. Maybe start getting them used to. Like maybe as soon as you walk off the stage, pull it off or something. Or maybe don't put it on until you're going out of the stage or something. Just slow, steady prog progress to change the dress code from we have our rules to, you know what, everyone's welcome. Um, dress codes change, but an honorable character endures. No matter what culture you're in, if you have an honorable character, it'll matter. Now, I will say this. If you're out of your element, don't try to change the culture. If you're going as a missionary somewhere, dress like they dress. Don't don't try to don't try to change things. Don't start a war somewhere that you won't be able to finish it.
Okay? If you're a pastor, don't start a war in a tactless manner. Get people on your side about stuff. Plan it out. Don't just make a rash decision. You have to think through these things because people like traditions. They like doing the same thing over and over again. And when you make a change, it makes them feel like a part of them is going to be missing. People don't like, feel, like change. It makes them feel scared. So remember these things. And if you are a normal person in the church, just stop being a stickler about stuff and stop trying to start fights about everything. Just let some stuff go.